Hey guys, it's Junior. Welcome back to my channel, Horsepower Warehouse. Now I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys lately about technical videos on Corvettes. You guys know I do a lot of C2 restorations. So I am in the middle of doing the wiring harness on the 66 Mossport Green 427 car. And I figured this is the perfect time for me to do a complete walkthrough and explanation of a wiring harness on a classic Corvette. Now this one is specific to a 66 427 car, but the same theory and principles apply for this harness to almost all classic Corvettes. The reason that we are replacing the entire harness on this car is not through lack of functionality. This thing, absolutely every function on the car worked, but here's what I found once I tore this car apart. There's a lot of no-nos going on here, but the gist of it is things like butt connectors, aftermarket switches, there was back looped wiring, there's a lot of extra wiring. I mean, there's zip ties all over the place. There's just a lot of stuff that I don't like to see on a wiring harness and what's gonna be an NCRS quality car when we're done. I mean, I can fix all of this, but the time that it would take for me to actually clean all these terminals, you could see how dark they are inside those spade connectors. These are the main connectors at the firewall. They're just never quite as nice and bright as the equivalent new one. So let's actually show you what you, let me show you guys what I have laid out here. I'm sorry, you never talk more silly than when you hit the record on the camera. I always stumble over my words the first time, but I'm a one take wonder, so I'm not gonna stop this. So here's what we've got. The way the car is oriented right now, all of the wiring is the same way. So this is the passenger back corner of the car. This is the tail lights. It runs along the back of the car and goes forward on the driver's side. So what we're looking at here, it starts with gas tank. So little tidbit of information. This is a three wire sending unit. I heard that this was only used on C2 Corvettes. It was a kind of an experimental thing, only used on these cars will you see this three wire sending unit. It sends a lot of people through loops on how to diagnose these because there's so little information on it because they were used so little. So as we keep going, we will see both of the tail lights. We have one that is a dual filament and one's a single filament tail light. You'll also notice that we have a ground here. It's very important that the ground is connected to the back of the housing on the tail light because as you guys know, these cars are fiberglass. They do not have any ground going through the body. So anything that is electrical has to be supplied with its own ground. So that's why you see two grounds here, one to go, one for each tail light. Moving forward, or I should say towards the driver's side, in the center here, we have a ground and a power. Can you guys imagine what that's for? License plate. Keep going to the left. We're gonna find another tail lamp, two of them actually with the grounds, just the same as we found on the passenger side. As we keep going, what's the next electrical thing that we find? Antenna. So right about here is where it actually goes through the body and into the interior of the car. It's gonna go up over, let me show you guys. See, it goes into the car through that grommet there. I actually put sound deadener over it and I'm gonna have to uncover that. But, and then it goes up over here and you'll see that the dome light is the next thing we're going to run into which is this orange and white wire here and then finally it goes forward to the kick panel of the car now this is where the rear harness everything that we just covered is considered the rear harness right so this is where the rear harness connects to the main harness so it can be logically said that if we have problems with any of the stuff that we just went over any of the turn signals, the running lights, 
the is the fuel tank gauge working you know the license plate lights dome all of that shares the same connector so if you have problems back here i would be looking heavily at probing both sides of this connector just to make sure you have continuity through here so that will more than likely set you in the right spot if you're looking to diagnose any of the problems with that stuff and this connector will actually be found it runs along here and the connector is going to be somewhere in this area now you can see a holder here that is for a circuit breaker for our headlight motors and we're almost there anyhow so in that corner here's our main fuse block you'll notice on the back side of the fuse block we have two connections this is the other side of the firewall and that's where the engine harness and forward harness connects to so basically our firewall is going to be here main fuse block this connection here is for the um, high low switch for the headlights this connection here is for the column we already went over this this is where the rear harness connects to this connection is for the door switch for the illumination and there is the light for the door switch these two are for that uh, circuit breaker that i had just talked about for the headlight motors so we have these two these are both your dashboard your instrument cluster so we have things like i mean headlight switch um, this one is headlight motors the turn signal illumination is a dark blue and a light blue all of the grays are um, backlight illumination these are for the gauges themselves and you'll notice how they're oriented so you really can't mess it up when you attach them to the gauges they do that on purpose so you don't fry your gauges um, again more gauges ground this one is actually your um, ignition switch it keeps going along the firewall and this actually runs outside the firewall so what we have here this one goes to the ballast resistor we have this one is neutral safety switch we have wiper pump and wipers and then back inside of the car this is all the passenger side inside of the harness kind of like the dashboard harness is what i guess i'll call it we have these two are for clock this one is for the fan um, illumination for the switch fan switch um, this one is for the relay i mean yeah and the good thing about all of this is again there's only one way you can hook a lot of this stuff up so you're not really going to mess anything up Coming out here, we have, again, another door switch. We have the illumination that this switch can, controls. And then this one is the um, glove box. I hope you guys have considered liking and subscribing at this point, because I'm doing this all off of memory. I had it all laid out and I'm like, you know what? This will be able to help someone. If you're having problems at home, it's much better to be able to visualize and see where everything goes to all of these circuits go straight to that fuse box same thing with these circuits everything that's the central hub but it's nice to see you know how things are wired through the switches and then end back up so we already have the firewall out here this is where our forward harness and our engine harness connects to. Now, usually you can buy these in two separate harnesses. You have the engine harness and the forward harness um, or forward light harness, I guess is a better way to say it. But let's look at the engine harness first. So we're going along the firewall. The two pink wires here are going to the ballast resistor. This one is going to the temperature um, sending unit for your temperature gauge uh, this is a ground actually for your wiper motor keep going this way we have the hot and ground for the blower motor for the heater or what, what would be the ac if this car had it keep going further this one actually goes down like this i guess i should say because these are all of your starter connections 
So you have, you know, ground, hot, ballast resistor, and signal to tell the starter to fire. So we're back up to the harness connection at the firewall. Let's keep going this way. We have the voltage regulator, ground for voltage regulator. We have alternator connections, so hot, ground, field. Keep going forward. Sorry about my shoes squeaking. This is actually the horn relay. So we have signal wire to the relay, ground, hot, and then output. And this output actually heads that way. So we have one horn here and another horn out there. But before we get to those, we have headlight on the driver's side and running slash turn signal on the driver's side. And then this is a little extension harness that connects to the headlight and goes inside of the buckets that actually pivot. Keep on going, headlight motor. So main connection to the motor, ground, and then these are for the limit switches. Most cars that I've actually come in here that I haven't restored yet, either the limit switches are broken or just flat out disconnected. It will work without these connected, but it will just, once it comes to a stop, it'll keep sending signal to the motor to keep turning and it's really bad for them. So I highly suggest having these hooked up. Keep going, we got the passenger side headlight motor. And then we're gonna finish off with horn, headlight, and headlight and turn signal. So, ooh, it is a hot, humid day. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's raining outside. It was like really bright and sunny and raining probably 10 minutes ago and now it's dark and gloomy. That's just how Florida rolls. I love it and I hate it and then I love it again. But there's the entire wiring harness for a 66 Corvette, guys. If you have any issues, feel free to drop me a comment. I'll do what I can to kind of steer you in the right direction. I have a lot of experience with the 63 to 67 cars. I mean, I do restorations on all sorts of stuff. But this is my first technical video that I'm actually gonna drop on the channel because I figured this is probably one of the more important and more prevalent ones. There's a lot of guys having electrical issues with these Corvettes because it's a fiberglass car. Everything that has power needs to have ground as well ran to it. Can't just ground it to the body or the chassis like a lot of cars do. And before we wrap this video up, I wanna just show you guys how it looks mocked up in the car so you guys can see the vision of exactly what I was talking about this whole video uh, with it all laid out on the carpet. So starting in the back corner, you can see that we have fuel sending unit, there's our lights, there's our license plate connections, our driver's side lights with the grounds poking out underneath there. Of course, you guys know now that we have a uh, antenna wire that is below that hole. So let's see where the harness comes through. You can see how it's coming through that bulkhead hole right there. I actually put sound deadener over it for this junction here. That way when I lay my carpet down, it doesn't have a bulge and I don't want it to find its way out here and then have a bulge in the center. Um, you can see that we have the dome light wire which will go all the way up to here. The harness makes its way back down here. It's got the cover on it. And then of course I sound deaden the cover. So we will follow the cover all the way down and you can see this is where the plug is coming out you can also see we have the fuse box mounted up in there this is the circuit breaker that i was referring to earlier you can see that the harness follows its way along the, the dashboard towards the passenger side these are all the connections that we had viewed earlier for the instrument cluster i don't know if i had mentioned that we actually have a tan wire here for the parking brake signal. And then we have an orange and a white, and this is for the brake switch. Uh, as we keep going further this way, we have the stuff that's in the center stack here, which is not all, all that intensive. It's just a radio, a clock, and a blower switch. So that's essentially what all this stuff powers. You have radio power, um, blower switch. Yeah, very simple. 
keeps going that way. And all we have out there is glove box light. We have the door switch and the door illumination light that's mounted underneath there. So let's make our way out to the firewall. So as you can see, this is where the two plugs, I don't have the second one plugged in yet because it's, uh, it's fighting me a little bit. But nonetheless, you can see how one part of it, the engine harness heads that way. You can see where this is poking through. These are all of the uh, windshield wiper and pump and neutral safety switch. Um, ballast resistor connections. As we keep going further that way, basically all we have is the starter connections which go down and then we have the, the blower motor over that way. So bringing it over this way, you can see we have it routed along, kicks down here. This is where our regulator is gonna mount. Alternator is gonna be here, so we have all the wires there. You can see the horn relay mounts to those two holes and that's where all those connections are. The harness continues up under there. We have our two connections for the front running lamps, which go in this hole. And then of course our headlight. You can see our horn sticking out there. It keeps running along. We have headlight motor, headlight motor, keeps going and terminates with a horn and then passenger side headlight and passenger side running lamp slutch turn signal. So now that you guys have seen it, I mean, it's not all that intensely complicated, a circuit on a classic car. This is pretty representative of what you're gonna find on a lot of the stuff that I've tucked away in the rooms over there. So hope you guys enjoyed. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. I don't know. What do you guys think? Comment below. Was it worth it? I mean, this is not a cheap setup to do. I think it was 1500 bucks. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was 1500 for the complete harness kit for this car. And there are variations from the 63 to the 67 model years. This one is actually a 66 harness. When you order them, they're going to want to know which model year you have and if it's an AC or non-AC car. This one, of course, is a... Uh, 66 non-ac four speed 427 but this is representative of exactly what you're going to find in a classic corvette electrical system this is everything that is necessary to run all of the components now now that i know i have good continuity i'm going to have a fresh new harness i will check and test every single component individually. I have a power probe, a multimeter, everything that I need to test each individual component. I rebuild all the gauge set. I mean, we do things right here as you would expect. But comment down below. If you guys like this video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Uh, took me a little bit of time to lay this out, but I was doing it anyhow. So I'm just happy to share it with you guys. And hopefully, if nothing else, I can help someone at home that has one of these cars that they haven't blown apart the entire harness. And it's, well, for me, at least, it's easier to visualize it once I know the entire harness. I can go, oh, okay, that might be where my issue is, is at this junction point, you know? Oh, and uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. If nothing else, thank you for joining me. And until next time, take care.